Hi, this is Dan from Mochuaca Appliance Repairs. In the last video we were talking about problems with the diverter valve or recirculation valve on the Fisher & Paykel Smart Drive Eco washing machines. In this video I'm just going to go over the operation of the valve. If you lean the washing machine back and look underneath, the diverter valve sits just behind the drain pump and when you look a bit closer it's held on by a screw that runs around this clamp that clamps one of the hoses. Uh, there's squeeze clamps on the three hoses and you've also got two wires. Those wires are always live when the washing machine is on, so you need to make sure you unplug the power from that. Undo that screw with a 10mm socket or a Phillips, and then undo the squeeze clamps, take the hoses off, and you can take the valve off to test it. Right, so this is the diverter or recirculation valve out of a Fisher & Paykel smart drive. And I'm just going to take it apart, or specifically the wax actuator, and show you how it all works. First thing I'm going to do is take this cover off. These covers are quite important to try and shield moisture. This little wax actuator here does not like moisture, which is kind of sad putting on a bottom of a washing machine. But um, yeah, that's the problem. So that's what the shield is there to help stop drips, so that kind of thing getting to it. Now it's held in with a couple of clips, and there's actually a plunger at the top here that, um, if you can get it to focus, that also clips in. But I'm just going to pop this out. So this part here can move up and down. And that's basically what this actuator does. It heats up and moves up and down. We pop this open. So all that actuator is connected to is to a little um, arm in there and so basically it's going to move across and then this is a rubber seal that will seal off one or the other so in default this plunger is down it pulls this down and the arm will seal across here all water will go this way which is out to the drain when it heats up the plunger rises up it moves across and it blocks often what happens is you get um, a hair clip or a um, toothpick or something like that will get stuck and stop it from physically moving or even if that gets stuck beforehand, bits of lint and stuff will get caught coming in and hang in there. And all it has to do is enough to, to stop the seal from sealing entirely. And then while it's recirculating, water will also come out the drain. As a point, I try and avoid taking this part off because the more seals you break, the more chance you're going to get of a leak. I usually find that you can um, usually get in and clear whatever it is through these three hose, uh, holes, three pipes here, but having to take it apart. Onto the diverter wax actuator. So this is used on dish drawer, dishwasher dispensers and that kind of thing as well. It's nice and simple. You feed a voltage to it and um, it activates. You don't need to control it or anything like that. Now if you look here, it may not be too obvious to you, but there's actually a few black marks just in there, which is a hint. This one here is open circuit. Um, usually there's a couple of little clips here you have to undo. And this whole thing is under spring tension. This one's been apart before. You can see that spring, I'm just going to pop that out, get that out of the way. So this is all that's inside it. We have two contacts coming through. We have a little um, PTC puck. Or well, actually, sorry, in this one I think it's NTC. Negative energy coefficient. This is a little um, solenoid full of wax. And then we've got contact the other way. So the electricity is just flowing, flowing through. Electricity flowing through the wax um, actuator itself does nothing. It's just there as a conductor. And then there's a little wee um, pin at the top, and that will extend out the top by about, usually about four or five millimeters once it's hot. So basically it's a sealed chamber of wax. When you heat up the wax, the wax expands, and the wax expanding pushes the plunger up with quite a bit of force, which is why they're good for something like this valve. You don't need to worry about a solenoid or something like that. It's gonna just open up. And there's quite a long, strong force, a strong spring, sorry, to return it back in again once, this, once it's cooled down. Now, if we have a look closer again, we can see a bit of um, black marks around there. So what usually happens on these, it actually doesn't look too bad on this one. So this one's gone open circuit, but what usually happens is that you short out. So if you get moisture, this here is, is the um, little positive temperature coefficient puck. Um, and so this heats up with the voltage running through it, and this provides the heat for this wax actuator. 
Um, the problem is the fact that when we had it all together there, we had 240 volts. Now there's no voltage drop happening across this wax actuator. So we have 240 volts just across a couple of millimeters here. If all the voltage runs through that little heating element puck there, that'll be fine. But if we have moisture in here, it'll actually short across the surface and then you have a direct short on your mains voltage and that will usually blow the little triac or whatever you're using to switch it. So this is a common problem with these across across the range. So they're used on dishwashers for dispensers. That's usually kept pretty dry. Um, so it's not too much of a problem. They're used on ASCO dishwashers to open and close on some of them. Old ones to open and close a little vent for the drying. And you had steamy hot air coming out right beside it. So they always shorted out. And usually, but not always, but usually took out the control board at the same time. Um, so the thing that happens though is that after it shorts out across the surface, sometimes you get a bit of carbon leaf there and sometimes you don't. So once it's cooled down uh, or dried out, so I say once it's dried out, it can actually read okay. Uh, the resistance is I think 0.7 um, kilo ohms to 2.5 kilo ohms off the top of my head. So it's quite a wide range depending on what temperature it's at, but it could measure okay. So you always want to take the control board apart, have a look at the control board, see if that part of the circuit's blowing. And to be honest, if you're putting a new control board in and you don't know what killed it, or if you did know what killed it, if the valve's a bit old, it might be a good thing to replace the, the wax actuator or the diverter valve. So here I've wired up a valve to a power cord. And I'm connecting the power now. There's a delay usually of about 20-30 seconds before anything happens. And then that plunger is starting to slowly move up at the top. As that wax inside there is heating up. And then when it gets to the top, it's going to stop. And the beauty of these systems, they use such little current that the wax actuator can just sit there energize and it will hold it open. And then we disconnect the power. Depending on how long it's been on, it can take quite a while to cool back down. If we have a look in the side there you can see the uh, the plunger has moved across. I need to get a torch. So in the bottom we can see that plunger's all the way across to the left, blocking off the left side which should go to the drain and putting it all down to the diverter for recirculation. And this plunger will sit up here for several, or maybe a minute longer until it cools enough to retract back in. And you can see it is actually very slowly starting to close there now. Plunger at the bottom hasn't moved yet. Just reaching the fully switch over the other position there now.